every year I plan activities, community projects around Asia. It's so fulfilling to plan initiatives to help out and give something back. But there was one experience that was unforgettable. I took a one-hour flight from Manila to visit a rural community. When I arrived, children ran towards me. They playfully grabbed my leg, pulled my shirt, jumped behind me so I can carry them. A little girl took what we would take for granted. It was a piece of bread that I got from the airplane. She looked at it, smelled it, tore it piece by piece. And she started walking around, sharing it with all the other children. That sight moved me and shocked me as well. I realized no matter how many feeding programs are put in place, the effect is short-lived, like that piece of bread. And then I saw her, Janelyn. She was a young, bubbly woman who intrigued me. I wanted to know her story. Janelyn knew what it was like to lose everything. She lost her home after a devastating typhoon. Her abusive father would treat her mother as someone inferior. Her loving, patient mother never finished school. Janelyn wanted a different life for herself. She wanted to get over her fears, move out of her village, and see more. Some people become migrant workers not out of desperation. They become migrants because it is their dream to have that freedom. Janelyn had a dream to work in the booming semiconductor industry. She wanted to really develop herself, overcome herself, and be someone she's proud of. She was able to finish school on scholarship. Working in a factory is the first step to empowerment and a formal entry into the economy. Empowerment is self-awareness, self-confidence, and a life of opportunity. But after moving out of her village, was she really fulfilling her dream? My life was very different. I was an investment banker for six years at the top floor of one of the tallest buildings in Metro Manila. My team financed billions of dollars for companies to grow. The power plants, the infrastructure, the railway system were fruits of hard work and long hours. Unlike Janelyn, I felt empowered in a boardroom, especially during difficult negotiations. I would sit there beside my female boss and be surrounded by the president and top management who were all men. My dreams? I didn't have time to think of a dream. We were financing one of the largest acquisitions in Asia Pacific. And I remember trying to explain to the factory manager how major and how important this acquisition was. You know, your company will have more product lines, you'll be able to sell to more countries, and don't forget, you'll have record-breaking profits. He looked at me and, what do you need? A bigger factory? That's not going to work. There's no one to hire. There's a housing shortage, so we can't hire migrant workers. People move to that neighbor factory and who pays a few pesos more. And did you know workers are always absent? Why aren't they going to work? After the factory visit, we drove past workers' homes. They were bad. Thin walls made out of plywood and rusted iron sheets. It was hot, crowded, messy, litter, laundry mixed everywhere. Theft was common. I realized that factory workers were struggling and absent because they were getting sick from the living conditions. 
During the fancy closing dinner and the document signing for the acquisition, I suddenly thought about Jenna Lynn, and I was wondering how she was doing. Two years passed, I married the man of my dreams, we moved into an apartment, life was good. I started to ask myself and reflect, what is my life mission? Is there a way to bring Jenna Lynn's world and my world together? One night, I googled the words leadership, change maker, sustainability, impact, and I found the Nudge Global Impact Challenge in the Netherlands. It gathers young professionals, around 100, to develop sustainable impact plans for businesses. Initially, I got a rejection letter. I mean, who likes bankers? <laughs> but eventually, I found myself here for the program, and I won the challenge with two other ladies. I learned about the UN goal to create sustainable communities. I learned about innovative housing solutions for refugees and students. My Dutch friends brought me to a housing project outside of Amsterdam. When I got back, my husband Dan and I started People Pods, a professionally run co-living dormitory for migrant factory workers to fill and bridge the gap between what are the needs of the factory and what are the needs of the worker. Imagine factory workers can ride a safe shuttle to work. They will have uninterrupted shower water. They will have solar energy to reduce their electricity bill, a comfortable bed, affordable meals, neighbors they knew, unlimited Wi-Fi, but more importantly, the peace of mind to know that when you move from your village to an industrial zone, you have a safe and secure place to live. Factory workers form the low social economic class. They are part of what is called the bottom of the pyramid, 4.5 billion people in this world or more than 50% of global consumption. This is not a charity. This is a large market opportunity. By combining my work experience and that encounter with the children and the bread, I knew that if I wanted to create real, sustainable, scalable, long-term impact, my startup had to be structured as an inclusive business, a business that is profitable, investable, and that serves the bottom of the pyramid to uplift their lives. Momentum build up. My husband Dan and I won the INSEAD Venture Competition in France and in Singapore, and then we formally launched the company, and we now have our pilot site with 200 beds exclusively for women. People Pods is not just a place to stay, it's a place to live. It is a home. We are trying to build a community, an empowering community, but what makes a community? It's the values. Values influence decisions. How you will spend, how will you develop yourself, Values such as belonging, belonging and happiness. You know, the simple reminder we give that people will know your birthday or the shared meals that bring people together. Values like connectivity for the worker to buy their first smartphone, the first video call to home, and the first time they can connect with the world through social media self-development. Our distance education partner provides television and online content for tools and life skills, like financial literacy, teaching factory workers how to budget and save their money. 
the math and English content will help those who want to be supervisors one day. Love. Finding a partner who will love and respect you and treat you as a companion and as an equal. After 400 surveys and one-on-one -on -one interviews, I learned how important family is to a factory worker, especially helping their family by providing the tuition for younger siblings or good hospital care for their aging parents. I end with a question. Which country in the world is the largest investor in the Philippines in 2016? It is the Netherlands. There are 400 active Dutch companies in the Philippines today. That's why I am proud to be here to bring our two worlds together. The next time you read a newspaper and come across an article that says the Philippines is one of the fastest growing economies in Asia, please think of Janelin. Janelin is 23 years old. That's the median age in the Philippines. Janelin is part of what drives our economy, the 70 million skilled and educated labor force. So come and partner with the Philippines. We need more jobs for young people like Janelin, but more than the jobs, we need to give 10 million factory workers the opportunity to live a better life and to fulfill their dreams. The core of any manufacturing company is the worker. So I am here to challenge you companies to put the factory worker at the very center of your business and not at the side behind the assembly line. Put them at the center and build a community around them to keep the productivity of your company sustainable. People pods is just the first step in the right direction. Our model communities for migrant factory workers are not just for the Philippines, but also here and the rest of the world. Thank you.